We are a little over 48 hours away from the 22 Forever game. Who will be the breakout players and which Utah football players will also surprise us? All that and more on today's Locked On. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments as well as on social media. We can follow our show on X at Locked On Utes. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. Right now, new customers can join one good can get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets guaranteed. That's one hundred and fifty bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined on today's show by Ryan McDonald of the DesertNews.com. And Ryan, we're almost at the spring game. It's kind of funny how quickly spring ball always seems to fly by, but we're already at the point where, you know, last week here of everything kind of rolling up and it all culminates in Saturday's action. And I think what's really exciting is getting to see these guys for an extended stretch of time. Mm-hmm. Yes, Cam Rising's not going to give it a go for very long. Brant Keithy neither. If we see them at all, you never you never know. I think they'll get a series in just to shake some of the rust off, considering neither of them have played even a, a – They have yes, they've done the scrimmages, but they haven't gone live with fans in the stands. Like, Keithy has been a year and a half – Rising's been over a year at this point too now. So like that's where it'll be good for those guys to get some live reps. But what's most exciting is you get to see the breakout players. So we'll talk about the guys who will surprise us. But starting with the breakout players, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I just do think this guy's going to be generating the most buzz after the spring game. Brandon Rose was like the spring MVP last year, but he didn't have a great fall camp. I think he is going to have a better fall camp when he gets to that point, but I do think he will be the winner of spring ball. I think between him and Isaac Wilson, he will look like the better quarterback. I think his experience will really help him, and I think he's going to do a good job taking care of the ball versus, I'm going to say in a second, I think Wilson might have a turnover or two, just being that he is only a freshman learning the ropes of collegiate football. And I I think Rose is just going to look really poised, show great understanding of the offense, do a good job dissecting the defenses he played. And I think the Utah offense, at least for when it comes to the two backups that we're going to see in the 22 forever game, We'll think that at its best, if not Cam, it will look to Rose, and I think he will be the breakout star of spring ball. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that logic makes a lot of sense. You know, just, yeah, Rose has has been there a whole lot longer than Isaac Wilson. Um, I did find it interesting that Kyle Whittingham said the other day that it's pretty much a dead heat for Mm -hmm. the backup job, um, the backup quarterback job, and so that tells me um, that it's not just Rose, you know, run, running away uh, with it, you know, that, that there is a, a competition there. And, and so that's interesting. And, and I think I think I would have thought just like you uh, that, that Rose would look a lot better. And I still do think that's the case. But those those words from Whittingham that that it is a, a dead heat, you know, kind of a deal. Um, it does make me excited to see what Isaac Wilson can do um, on Saturday. And yeah, his kind of first, just like it's it's rising in Keithy's first in a long time. It's it'll be Isaac Wilson's first at all at the at the college level. So that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to, to seeing how Isaac can do. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great test and opportunity for him. I think Isaac is going to make a number of wow throws and plays, but I also think he's going to turn it over once, if not twice, and obviously he's not going to get hit. So that being through the air, I just think some of that inexperience, as I said, it takes time. Wilson's going to be a lot better a year from now than he is currently, and it shows you how good he already is if he's already contending with Rose for the backup job. So I think it's really exciting. I expect Wilson to do a lot of good, but I just expect an interception or two or a miss or two just because he is only a freshman to be the reason we're going, you know what, Rose looked a little bit better today. But as I said, I think Rose is going to be the breakout guy. I took We kind of talked about the quarterback, so you have to go non-quarterback, which is always, you know, spring ball, everyone, and just in general, right? Everyone always talks about the quarterbacks, hence why I went with Rose. I don't think he's going to be the best player on the field but it'll be the breakout star because he plays quarterback. Who is your breakout star for spring ball? Mm, you know, I've, I've heard good things about David Washington. Um, uh-huh. 
So that's that's maybe one. Um, Isaac, yeah, Isaac Wilson looked good. Um, man, I'm, I'm try, I am trying to think who who else um, is that. I, I mean, this is a defensive guy, but um, Tao Johnson. You know, I'm 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 looking that was forward my to. Pick. That was my second pick. <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, I'm taking him. <laughs> I think Tao. You talked about. The, you think Isaac Wilson's going to throw at least one pick? All right. Tao Johnson is going to be the guy who gets that one pick off of Isaac Wilson. I'm Ryan, I know we've done a few of these now, but I we're, our chemistry is really coming together. It's going to be hard for everyone to see on my little note screen here. I have Tao Johnson, parentheses, will pick off Isaac Wilson on my phone right now. So that is an unreal prediction. I don't think I've ever agreed with a guest more because I literally was going to say the exact same thing had you not beaten me to the punch, sir. <laughs> That's amazing. My shirt says I'm not superstitious. I'm just a little stitious. There's got to be something going on there. Yeah. That is beautiful. That, that is unreal. But I'm I'm totally with you on Johnson. I think he is a tremendous talent. I think the job he did even just last year, right? Being a corner and it was his first year really playing that position, made the transition from wide receiver. He looked really good. Now you're they're like, okay, we want you to be more of a safety. And he's excelled in that. He's been going against Nate Ritchie, Al Alakai Gilman, uh, also Jonathan Hall, all of these safeties who have impressed in games and Teo got some run last year and looked good. But the fact that he has looked the best already of that group really fires me up. And I think for the defensive players, I couldn't agree with you more. I absolutely think he's going to steal the show defensively for this team, because I think he's got special traits and intangibles with his length, speed and reactions, as well as now he's just had a lot of time to learn and practice and get reps, which are more important than anything at the safety and just defensive back. If he's a corner, he might play some of that too, just position in general. Hey Amen. Yep. Everything you just said, yes. <laughs> Jonathan Hall, too. We'll talk. Uh, maybe I'll talk about Jonathan Hall here in a second. But um, yeah, do you want me to talk about him now or in a second? Yeah, dude, I've right. I actually had on my list as well later on. Not as exactly in sync as we were on the last one, but I think all of the safeties are going to look good. I agree. Johnson will look the best. I expect all of Richie Hall and Gilman to make a play and a few plays. I should add that were like man, this safety race is going to rage into fall camp. Yeah, and and quite frankly, for all of them, it needs to. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it would be good for all of them if it did. You know, they're all fighting for time, fighting for, for jobs. They're, we, I know you and I have talked about it, that, and, and I'm sure you've talked about it at other times as well, that, yeah, there are jobs open back there, you know, and, and so – Who's gonna, who's gonna take the jobs, you know, and and um, and so I think yeah, spring ball and and this game in in front of live reps, you know, yeah, things. I do think things are different when the lights come on, you know, so to speak, and and we'll see who can perform when the lights come on. I'm I'm really excited to watch that as well. Some of the other guys I had listed as just potential. Not even breakouts, but just guys who I think are going to win this spring ball. I think Keenan Johnson, this 22 forever game that is, I think Keenan Johnson is going to have a really good game. I expect him to make a big pass breakup or two. He's just kind of done that throughout throughout the spring ball portion of the part of the year where I think he's going to continue to do that. And, of course, the most obvious one, I have no problem saying no one might look better on Saturday than Dorian Singer. I think he's going to impress that much. I think he's got a real shot to really steal the show in that regard for this Utah football team. I think a lot of people are going to be raving and excited about him because, yes, we'll talk a lot about Rose because it's the quarterback spot. But as for guys who will be making that – at like the big play impact. And I just mean that more frequently because obviously when Tao Johnson does it, it's just a defensive play. It doesn't generate the hype that offense does based on just the reaction it gets in general from a fan base. So that's where I think Singer's going to have a big spring ball as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see these guys in action in the 22 forever game. But all the guys we talk about are kind of known commodities. I want to talk about some of the unknown commodities that we think will surprise us in the 22 Forever game in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you all about our great friends at 
FanDuel. It's playoff time. The NBA, NHL, and baseball is in the full swing for their regular season. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose, bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe and secure and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, capital L and O, and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And speaking of FanDuel, man, the NBA playoffs should be a lot of fun. The Western Conference playoff race in particular, Ryan, there are going to be so many great games to bet on. Or How about some of these playoff series? It's still crazy to think LeBron and Steph Curry, one of those two, is probably going to miss the playoffs. But that, that's how the cookies crumbled this year for the play-in game. So can't wait to watch and see. Now that's going to play out. So many fun storylines in the East and Western Conference, as well as in the NHL, MLB. There's lots of action available, and you can get in on all of it right now if you head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Ryan, coming back in to talk about some of the breakout players that are going to surprise us. The other guys were kind of well-known. This will be the surprise us one. I'm going to cheat a little for my first pick. But didn't you cheat for the for your first pick last time? All kinds of right, cheating. That's true. That's true. I've cheated twice now. <laughs> um, I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll let you. <laughs> that's a good. Hey, look at you. You're paying attention. There you go. I forgot. I also said that about the first one, too. So keep me on my toes. I appreciate it. Um, but I'm gonna go with Mike Mitchell, and I'm sure a number of you like surprise us. He's been the breakout star of spring ball. Yes, but it's a different thing to do it when we get to see our own eyes on it. Even Brandon Rose, right? We saw Rose in the spring game light it up last year. We haven't seen Mike Mitchell take snaps as a Utah running back in a live. It's this isn't in a well, it's a live game, but it's a spring game. But still, we haven't seen him take live snaps in front of fans inside Rice Eccles Stadium. I expect him to make a couple of nice big plays and runs. And yes, Mackay Bernard and the Jalen Glovers of the world will still be the guys, I think. But I really think Mitchell is going to be the one who gets a lot of the work as the ones never get as much work here. And I think Mitchell's going to look really nice. And this will be one of those situations where we've heard all the hype in the spring. And now we get to see it for our own eyes in the 22 forever game. And I think a lot of fans are going to be leaving that game really excited about Mitchell's future with the Utah football team. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Um, you, you said it right there when you said we've heard the hype. Yeah, uh, you know, m one of my thoughts before you said that, and then um, then you said it was was Kyle Whittingham has has talked up Mike Mitchell. You know that during spring so far, and and I don't think Kyle Whittingham usually does that unless it's pretty real. Yeah, you know, um, in terms of talking guys up, and so. Yeah, no, I'm I'm totally with you. Um, I yeah, I think he's one that fans are going to be like, okay, yeah, I didn't know anything really about this guy, and yeah, he's he's someone to be excited about. Yes, he is, and I think a lot of people are going to be feeling that way too. As I as I discussed, Ryan, for you, who are you going to go with for your surprise spring ball guy who people are going to be leaving like, oh, I didn't expect I didn't expect that out of him. Yeah. Um. My first thought, and maybe this should have been more in the, the first segment, but I want to talk about him anyway. So we're going to well, use I, I cheated already, so it's only fair. I let the guest cheat as well on the list. <laughs> so I'm going to use this time to talk about him because I probably should have talked about him before. I'm interested to see Landon King. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, because everyone's excited about, about Brand Keithy. Land, assuming that... Um, Brant Keith, he's healthy. Landon King's not going to be the guy like maybe some people thought if we, you know, if, when we were wondering, oh, is Brant Keith going to go to the NFL? You know, kind of that whole deal. And and Landon King looked like he might be the next great Utah tight end. You know, that might have to wait a little bit now that Keithy is, is back. And assuming Keithy's going to be healthy, that might have to wait. But, yeah, I, I am excited to, to see Landon King and see – how he's gotten better and, and see, you know, maybe what kind of contributor he can be with, um, with Brent Keithy. I know they, Utah ha, has no pro they could, they could play 11 tight ends probably and, and be good. happy. Like, yeah, but you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to see landing King. There you go. There's my landing King segment. I like it because Landon is a guy who what Landon's perfect for is it is a surprise because he hasn't been talked about a lot. 
because this is a guy too who so much of the attention has been on Brant Keithy, you know, the acquisition of Carson Ryan that we haven't been able to give King his proper shine because King, yes, I think he had less than 200 yards last year. If he did, he had just over it. But think about how different the offense is going to be this year. When it is, it's not going to be pass heavy. They'll still run the ball more than pass. But I expect it to be much more a 45-55 to run pass type of ratio in which these guys are going to really benefit. And King is such a mismatch because of his athleticism at the tight end position that he's going to pop. And I got to believe that whether it's Rose or Wilson, both those guys are going to love throwing it to him. And you brought up a guy in King, right, who we know his name. We just kind of forgot about him. I think another one of those guys is Money Parks. Money Parks had a really good spring game last year. His connection with Rose was impressive. I think it's going to be impressive once again in this spring. I think he's going to be the team's leading receiver in the spring game. Or actually, just say, second leading receiver. I do think, no, actually, I'm going to go leader again. I was going to say Singer, and then I remember these guys don't play that much. So Singer will make the biggest plays, but he won't play that much. So I'm going to go Park still as the guy who leads the team in receiving, and he might not play a lot either. We'll see. I think Connor O'Toole is going to make frequent visits to the backfield, and I think that's going to be another guy where it's like, oh, if this was a live game, he will have had a few sacks already. So O'Toole is another guy that I expect to pop and do some nice things. And this one is a little bit more in the weeds of being a football nerd, of course, because in spring game, it's hard to do that with an offensive lineman. Are you going lineman? I was just about to say. You're right. I'm going lineman right now. Caleb Lomu, I think we're going to leave this game. There's not going to be a lot of hype because what do you do when you're an offensive lineman? You play well. No one notices you because you did your job. And I think that's what we're going to, after the game, one of the reporters I'm predicting is going to have a tweet, whoever it is out there, we'll wait and see if I called it, is going to have a report about like, lost in the shuffle today, Caleb Lomu looked really good at left tackle for Utah. I guarantee we're going to see that tweet. And I would love it if we actually do get to see that. But I just think he's going to play really well. He's had a really good spring. And there's another guy, a former four-star, of course, Rested up last year, basically got stronger, all of those things. That's what I mean by rested up, just stuck behind more experienced guys. And now I think he's ready to play and take over that left tackle spot. And I think it's going to start with a stellar spring game. Uh, yeah, I, I love that you gave love to the offensive lineman. We we are an off we are an O block friendly podcast. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I guess a little bit along the lines of of a lineman, not exactly, but in a blocker. I'm glad you. You brought up Carson Ryan. Um, he's, like I said, Utah, I think if they could play 11 tight ends, I think they might play 11 tight ends. Um, but, yeah, I think Whittingham and, and Ludwig love their tight ends. And, yeah, so Carson Ryan is another one at tight end who, I don't know, he played kind of a little, some, a couple different positions, but I think he'll slot in there at tight end and, do some stuff and and be like, oh yeah, he's a transfer who again might have gotten lost in the shuffle with with some of these other guys who are are coming back and who are playing. I, I think Carter because he had a pretty good freshman year um, at UCLA and and so I think he's a guy that I'm going to be watching. I agree. I'm excited to see him. Was there any other guys we didn't hit yet, Ryan, that you think deserve a shout out or a mention before this gets quote tweeted as they doubted me and they didn't bring me up in this and then we can be their guy's motivation? <laughs> oh, man, we're going to be some someone's bulletin board material, aren't we? <laughs> For the spring game. Um, no, I do want to say one more thing about the spring game, though. So do it. and I'll do it now. Um, I don't know. If, Fans saw Clark Phillips changed his number to 22 um, with the Atlanta Falcons. It was 34 and it's 22. And he said he did it in honor of Ty Jordan and Aaron Lowe. So that's pretty cool. Um, I really like how Utah does has, has made their spring game about Ty Jordan and Aaron Lowe. It's pretty cool. And that was cool what Clark Phillips did. So anyway. I absolutely agree. The scholarship, the foundation, everything that's kind of been built and based on from that is tremendous. And I'd love to see it at the NFL level too, to your point, Clark doing that is just the next extension of continuing to honor those players legacies, which is so important. And I, I just, I think it's awesome. Like you said, that Clark wants to continue to do that honor his brothers. Um, I still frequently wear as some of you who watch the show literally every day. will probably see, I still wear my 22 forever shirt like that. It's just a message that I've bought in new as well. The moment of loudness is based on laughing, smiling, 
And it all comes from remembering the, the memories of those two players. So I just love that that is what the spring game is without. And yes, I still sometimes call it the spring game, but I love that it is the 22 forever game because that is what it's about is forever remembering the legacies of Aaron Lowe and Ty Jordan. So I love that you brought that up, Ryan. Thank you for doing that there because it's tremendous to see Clark Phillips and the Utah football program continuing to do so much to make sure those two players are never forgotten. That is going to do it for our football talk today, but we are going to be diving into a big transfer edition, the first of the transfer portal season for the men's basketball team. Got to discuss all of that in one moment, but first I want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked On Utes, our great friends at Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app, app, app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. They have great last minute deals, all price, all in price views from your seat. Their low price guarantee, the Game Time, truly does take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. You can pick out any specific game or matchup that you'd love to attend, and there are so many fantastic games that you can head over to and get deals on today. You can save up to 60% by buying last minute, t- last minute tickets for sports, comedy, theater events, etc. You can even save more with exclusive in-app deals by selecting your seats. I love the the view from your seat. As I mentioned, you know exactly what kind of a view you're getting for. They also have the low price guarantee. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in your section or row for less. Game time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So make sure you take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College. It's capital L O N C. The first of each word, Locked On College, all together, no spaces for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E with capital L O N C for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Ryan, the running Utes have made their first addition in the transfer portal, getting Keanu Dawes to commit the former Rice Owl. 6'9", 215 was just a freshman last year. And the first thing that stands out is just the 6'9", 215, a long athletic guy, averaged six points a game, four rebounds from a season ago. This is a guy who shot 40% from the field. Look, he's just an okay three-point shooter, but I think the thing that excites me is this is a step for Utah getting more athletic, and when you're going to compete in the Big 12 like they will be next season, it's something you have to do. Yep. Um, you know, he was born in Utah, for, for fans who might not mm-hmm. know. He was born in Utah, lived here until he was nine, and then moved to Houston, and then um, he was considering Utah and BYU – is BYU allowed on this show? Is is, is saying is saying that allowed? Um, it is allowed. It is allowed. Even though you're in blue, we're still going to let you talk about it. <laughs> Hoping that wouldn't be brought up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So he he was he's a top he's a consensus top 150 kid prospect coming out of high school. A lot of places wanted him, um, including BYU and Utah. He decided to stay home and go to Rice. He was the highest uh, rated recruit ever to sign with Rice. Um, wasn't great as a freshman. So, you know, recruiting is always a, a guessing game, you know, a, a lot of a guessing game. You never know how guys are going to gonna pan out. But, um, yeah, I think you're exactly right. 6'9", 215, Utah hasn't had – that type of a player, I don't think, in a little while. And so, yeah, to, when they're to compete in the Big 12, I think it, it's a really nice get for Utah. Even, even if he doesn't end up being a top, the type of kid who, you know, a great, great player, at least just that that size is something Utah badly, badly needs. So I think it's a great get for them. I totally agree. And Ryan, I was actually reading an article on the Deseret News. You might be familiar with their work. This article talked about Dawes, and it said he's primed to give Utah the sort of player they hadn't had in several years. And I think that's really smart. I know I would want to read more of that said article. Do you know who wrote it and where we can check it out at? You know, JT, (laughs) wouldn't you know it was me who wrote that article? What a tee up. That was beautiful. (laughs) I have never been teed up that nicely in my life. That was me. I wrote that. Deseret.com. Check it out. Yes. 
Um, yes. <laughs> D-E-S-E-R-E-T dot com. And you can follow me on Twitter, but I mostly just tweet about food. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a quality. Hey, that's a quality follow to me. I, that is a, that's a quality follow. Follow anytime we talk about food. We'll have to do that. Maybe off season talk. We'll do some food places in Salt Lake that you guys like to eat at or something, or who knows. But it's still in the season because we got spring ball. We got one more episode to preview. That's what I'll be doing on tomorrow's show. But Ryan, always great having you on. Thanks for joining us. Always great to be here. Appreciate you. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes. But we look forward to seeing you with us tomorrow as we talk more things Utah football.